In this short video, I'm going to do a few examples using trig functions. Now, the important limit that we learned in the previous video is the limit as theta goes to zero of sine of theta over theta equals one. Now notice that sine of theta over theta is not a continuous function when theta equals zero, but we can define a related function f of x, which equals sine of x over x whenever x is not equal to zero, and then equals one when x equals zero. Now this function is a continuous function for all real numbers, including zero. Now also remember, we had a super important theorem when we talked about the properties of continuous functions. And the super important theorem says that if you're trying to find the limit of the composition of two functions, and you know that the outer function is continuous, and you know the limit value for the inner function, then that limit evaluates to f at the limit value for the inner function. So let's translate that into our special trig limit. That says that if I have any function g of x and the limit as x approaches a of g of x equals zero. So notice it doesn't matter what the value a is, but the limit value has to equal zero. Then the limit as x approaches a of sine of g of x over g of x equals one. So in order to use this theorem or this property, I need to have the inside of the sine function and the denominator be identical. They must be exactly the same formula. So let's look at three examples to illustrate this property. I'm going to look at the limit as x approaches zero of the sine of the six x all over x. So I don't have the identical function on the inside of sine and in the denominator. But what I can do is multiply top and bottom by six. So six over six. Well, why would I do that? I would do that because then I would get the limit as x approaches zero of six sine of six x over six x. Now in the numerator, this constant multiplier of six can actually be factored out of the limit. And so that's going to be six times the limit as x approaches zero, sine of six x over six x. Now I have the identical function inside the sine function and in the denominator. And so uh, as x goes to zero, six x goes to zero. So the limit of sine of six x over six x goes to one. And I still have the six outside, so that'll be six times one, which equals six. Let's look at another example. In this example, inside the sine function, I have x squared minus 25. And in the denominator, I have x minus five. Well, I'd like to have x squared minus 25 in the denominator. So what I can do is multiply by a form of one. That is, I'm gonna multiply top and bottom by the quantity x plus five. 
because I know that x minus 5 times x plus 5 equals x squared minus 25. So that'll equal the limit as x approaches 5 of quantity x plus 5 times sine of x squared minus 25 over x squared minus 25. Now I can't factor out the x plus 5 because x is changing as x approaches 5, but I can write this as the product of two limits. I can write it as the limit as x approaches 5 of x plus 5 times the limit as x approaches 5 sine of x squared minus 25 over x squared minus 25. So in the second limit, the function that is inside the sine function and in the denominator is identical. And as x approaches 5, x squared minus 25 approaches 0. So that limit is going to be 1. And so now I just need to evaluate the other limit using direct substitution. And so that's going to be 10 times 1 is just equals 10. And in our final limit here, we have to do something a little bit different. I have the limit as theta approaches zero of sine of sine theta over sine of two theta. So I don't want sine of two theta in, in the denominator. I want sine of theta. So what I'll do is use a trig identity. I'll use the double angle formula. And then I'll have sine of sine theta in the numerator. And in the denominator, I'm going to have two sine theta cosine theta, which I will break up into two different functions. The product of two functions, the limit as theta goes to zero of sine of sine theta over sine theta times the limit as theta goes to zero. Now just one in the numerator over two cosine theta in the denominator. So let's just do a quick check there. Multiplying the numerators together, I would have sine of sine theta. And multiplying the denominators together, I would have 2 sine theta cosine theta. So now I'm just left with evaluating these two limits. The first limit, since I have the identical function sine theta inside the sine, and also in the denominator, and as theta goes to zero, sine of theta goes to zero. So then I know that the first uh, limit is going to evaluate to one. The second limit I can evaluate by direct substitution. When I replace theta with a zero, I'll have one half. And so the limit evaluates to one half. Well, I hope you found these three examples useful in trying to apply this important limit theorem.